Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You are watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. In the video today, we're going to look at why sideburns are a name for facial hair. Let's get started. Burn sides, sideburns. Have you ever wondered why sideburns are called that? Well, wonder no more. It turns out, despite this particular brand of facial hair being around as far back as at least 100 BC, with one of the earliest known instances being in a mosaic of Alexander the Great, sideburns were named after a specific man in the late 19th century. The man was a politician, businessman, and Union Army General Ambrose Burnside. Burnside sported a slightly unusual facial hair style, with particularly prominent mutton-chop sideburns connected to a mustache, while keeping his chin shaved perfectly clean. Burnside was an extremely poor general, something he himself was well aware of. For instance, because of his own ineptitude as a military commander, he twice refused to take command of the Army of the Pontemac before ultimately giving in and accepting. Nevertheless, Burnside's popularity as a general and later politician, in combination with the fairly unique formation of his whiskers, helped start something of a new facial hair trend. Around the 1870s to 1880s, this gave rise to this facial hairstyle being named Burnside's. Within a few years of this, the facial hair down the side of one's cheeks, rather than being called mutton chops, as it was at the time in some regions, began being called a modification of Burnside's side burns, with the first documented instance of this being in 1887. Presumably the shift was from the fact that this part of the Burnside's facial hair was on the sides of the face, and of course leaving the burns parts in homage to the aforementioned style. Shortly after sideburns popped up, an alternate sideboards also made its debut, with boards thought to have been shortened from border, so essentially a side border, which is a fitting description of the style. Bonus facts An old 19th century slang term for a man who liked to frequent brothels was a beard splitter, presumably coming from the fact that people used to commonly refer to not just a certain style of facial hair, but other bushy hair as well as a beard, starting around the 17th century. Bonus fact 2. Mutton chops, besides being a slab of rib meat cut somewhere perpendicular to the spine, also refers to a style of sideburn where the facial hair tends to grow larger as it extends down towards the chin, with the chin being shaved. The first known instance of this style of sideburn being named such was around the mid-1860s, and is presumed to have been called this due to the shape somewhat resembling the mutton chop cut of meat. The meat itself was first called such in the early 18th century. Bonus Fact 3 Although examples can be seen all over the map throughout recorded history, sideburns weren't a terribly popular form of facial hair until around the early 19th century, particularly being popular in Western Europe among members of the military. From here, the style began to spread throughout the world. Sideburns declined in popularity in the early 20th century, but saw a resurgence, with a much more conservative version of them popping back up in the mid-20th century, thanks to the likes of James Dean and Elvis Presley. This new version tended to be shaved close to the face rather than the formerly common mutton chop version. In stark contrast to sideburns in the 19th century, most often worn by respected military men, sideburns post-1950 began being seen as a facial hairstyle of rebels. Bonus Fact 4 The English word moustache comes from the French word of the same spelling, moustache, and popped up in English around the 16th century. The French word in turn comes from the Italian word moustachio, from the medieval Latin moustachium, and in turn the medieval Greek moustachion. We now finally get to the earliest known origin, which was from the Hellenistic Greek moustax, meaning upper lip, which may or may not have come from the Hellenistic Greek melon, meaning lip. It is theorized that this in turn came from the Proto-Indo-European root menda, meaning to chew, which is also where we get the word mandible. Bonus Fact 5 The longest moustache ever recorded was in Italy on March 4, 2010, and measured in at 14 feet long. That's 4.29 meters. The proud owner of that magnificent moustache was Indian Ram Singh Chauhan. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.